How to create the electronic file to submit to the IRS. This tutorial will show you how to create the 1220 file for electronic filing with the IRS. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will assume you have applied for and received your transmitter control code or TCC from the IRS, created an account with the IRS Firesight, finalized your recipient data and are ready to electronically file with the IRS, updated your software to the latest version, and entered your transmittal information. A transmittal control code is required if you are planning to submit to the IRS directly. It can take one to two months to receive. If you do not have one, please review IRS Form 4419, Application for Filing Information Returns Electronically, to apply for a TCC. If you do not have time to apply for a TCC, please consider using the 1099 Pro Service Bureau to file on your behalf which we also have a separate video tutorial for. If you have not entered your transmittal control code information, please go to the File Toolbar option on the top left side menu. Click on Electronic Filing Transmitter, and then enter the transmitter information in the appropriate form category as different form types utilize different transmitter codes. To begin, let's start by going to Step 3 Filing My Forms on the left side menu and click on Electronic Filing. A window will appear asking you to select which series of tax forms you would like to process. For our example, we will pick the first one listed for the 1099 series. Press OK to continue. This will bring you to the e-file generation session history screen for the form series that was chosen. From here, you can view past e-file sessions, run reports, reset or void a previous session, or begin a new e-file session. To begin the e-file generation, click on Create an IRS Fire or Air e-file button located on the top left of your screen. A submenu will appear. Select the top option to create a new 1220 format file for e-file. The other two options are to create electronic files for ACA forms. This will start the wizard to create an IRS Publication 1220 formatted electronic file. Please read the informational section of the screen for helpful hints about deadlines, corrections, and other reporting notes. At the bottom left of your screen, you can check for program updates to our software. Click on Check for 1099 Pro Program Updates. A pop-up window will appear letting us know our software is up to date. Press OK. The IRS also requests that you have a unique account number on each form that is submitted. This is to help with situations such as when you are filing two separate records for the same recipient. It is good business practice to always have a unique number on each individual form. If you don't already have account numbers, simply click the Start the Generate Accounts Wizard button provided on the screen. This process will only assign unique account numbers to records that don't already have account numbers. It will not overwrite any data that you already have in these fields. If you already have account numbers, please disregard these next few steps. Read the first informational screen, then select Next. You can select which filers you would like to generate account numbers for. For this example, we will leave the default option selected all forms for all filers, then select Next. The Ready to Begin the Account Number Generation Process screen will give you a summary of the total number of filers and forms to be used. If this summary is correct, click on Finish. An administrator box will pop up confirming the total forms scanned and the total forms that did not previously have an account number. Click OK. Click on the Begin button at the lower right corner of the screen to continue. The next screen contains options to configure the composition of the electronic file we are going to create. On Step 1, Select Filers. Select which filers you would like to include in this electronic filing session. You can choose All of My Filers to choose all of your filers. Pick Current to use the filer you have selected at the top of the left-hand screen menu. Or you can select Specific Filers by picking Select Tag Filers. A pop-up window will show you a list of all your filers, and you can highlight and then tag the filers you want to e-file records with. Click on Proceed to Next Step to close this window. For our example, we will select Current. Continue to Step 2, Form Types. You can select All Form Types, Current Form Type, or Select Tag Form Types. For our example, we will select Current Form Type, 1099 Miscellaneous. It is important to mention that filer and form type selections are subject to the security limitations set in the software. Thus, if your user only has access to select filers and form types, but you select all of my filers and all of my form types, 
then only those filers and form types that you have security access to will be processed. In the case where you have full security access to all filers and form types, you should be careful to select only the filers and form types that you want to process. Next, on step 3, File Type, select the type of file being transmitted. Select whether you are sending originals, corrections, or creating a test file. Please remember that forms are only considered corrections if they have already been filed to the IRS and you are submitting a second corrected record. The test option would be selected if creating a test file for submission to the IRS Firesight. For this example, we are going to select the default option, Original. On Step 4, Filter Criteria, select the forms you wish to process. By default, you can choose to exclude forms with no money amounts. Uncheck this box if you wish to include forms with no money amounts. We will leave it checked. If you have selected the 1099 miscellaneous form for filing, or if you have selected all form types, then there will be an additional 1099 miscellaneous filtering option available. The IRS filing deadline for all 1099 miscellaneous forms with Box 7, non-employee compensation amounts, is January 31st. You can choose to process all 1099 miscellaneous forms or to process only those 1099 miscellaneous forms that have Box 7, non-employee compensation amounts. Essentially, this filter option allows you to only file the 1099 miscellaneous with Box 7 non-employee compensation forms while leaving any other 1099 miscellaneous records behind for you to file at their respective deadline date. Step 5, Federal Thresholds, applies IRS reporting thresholds to the selected records. Federal thresholds are exceptions to when a tax form needs to be reported to the IRS. For example, if a 2019 1099 miscellaneous record reports a total amount less than $600 in boxes 1, 3, 6, 7, and 10, and you apply federal thresholds, this record would be excluded from IRS reporting. Our software gives you the option to apply federal thresholds with the process forms meeting federal thresholds for the tax year checkbox and the ability to apply them at different levels. These levels include Apply individually. This means that federal thresholds are evaluated against each tax record with no respect to other records or filers. P-code or P-TIN. This means that the software will first aggregate any tax records that have the same TIN and then apply the federal thresholds to that aggregated amount. For example, if you have two 1099 miscellaneous forms for $300 for the same person, but each with a different account number, the software would realize that, when combined, the value is $600 to the same TIN and that both records should be filed. EIN. This is the same concept as applying by payer code or P code, but includes all payer codes under an EIN. This method is the preferred method for IRS reporting and is the default software choice. The combined federal state CFS reporting options under step 6 is a federal program where the IRS forwards participating form types to participating states so that they may also receive the data and help fulfill your state direct reporting requirements. For more information, please look up the Combined Federal State Filing Program on our website at www.1099pro.com. Hover your cursor over the Services tab and then click on IRS Combined Federal State on the drop-down menu. By default, the software will use the CFS program for all filers. However, you have the ability to use filer defaults, which will utilize the settings from when you set up your filing entity, or to select tag filers to specifically include or exclude specific filers. Let's leave it on all filers for our example. Next, in step 7, you have the ability to apply state thresholds for deciding which records to include in the CFS program when applicable. State thresholds are similar to federal thresholds in that states only require certain form types and dollar values to be reported. There are two types of state threshold rules that the 1099 Pro software supports. These are standard thresholds. Any records that are below these thresholds are excluded from having the CFS indicator and thus only filed with the IRS and not forwarded to the state. CFS exceptions. Even though a record may be eligible to report in the CFS program, it does not mean that it should be. Many states publish exceptions to the CFS program, such as if a record has a state withholding amount. Many of the states want those records to be reported directly to the Department of Revenue rather than through the IRS CFS program. 1099 Pro researches these exceptions for each state, 
each form type, and each tax year, and then updates the software to be able to automatically apply them. The most generally correct method is to apply standard thresholds along with CFS exceptions, and then to report the remaining state records that were excluded due to CFS exceptions directly to the states by their respective deadlines. However, 1099 Pro gives you the ability to choose the method that best fits your company, such as to only apply standard thresholds and include everything possible in the CFS program. That is an internal business decision that companies need to make and that 1099 Pro cannot advise on. The state grouping options follow the same logic as the federal grouping in Step 5 and the software defaults to EIN grouping for state threshold application. Step 8 allows you to verify transmitter and contact information for your electronic file. For this example, we will leave what we have. Under Extra Options, you can run an error scan of your records to find potential errors and warnings that could cause IRS penalties or file rejection down the line. Generally, we recommend that customers run our Errors and Warnings Report after importing or use the Errors and Warnings Report to Excel from ASP Web Module to correct any major issues before filing. This scan simply tells you whether any errors or warnings exist. Please note, you are still able to create and submit a file that has errors and or warnings as not every warning is critical. It is up to the IRS on whether or not they will issue any penalties. The next option allows you to specify where your electronic file will be created and saved. Please note the location and make sure you can access it after you create the file. You will need to browse to the same location to retrieve the file and to upload it to the IRS Fire site. We will leave it in the default folder. C Drive, 1099 Pro, Pro 99 CS, MAG files. Press Create File with the green arrow in the lower right hand corner. We will be brought back to our session screen with the pop up window in front of it. The window will show the progress of creating the file. Once finished, it will show how many records were processed. Press OK. At the top of our eFile session list, we can now see our session with the file name listed. The file name will include our session number, transaction type, date, and time created. Now you can submit your file to the IRS FireSite, and the software provides a direct link to the site at the bottom left called Visit IRS FireSite. Thank you! And that concludes our video tutorial for how to create electronic files to submit to the IRS.